The lesser of two evils is still evil. <laughs> um, Brian, you mean to tell me that you would rather have Kamala Harris be president rather than Donald Trump? Because after all, you're against Donald Trump, so that must mean that you're for Kamala Harris. It has to, because you either have to be Republican or Democrat. Uh, there can be no uh, other option. You know, a, a vote. If you don't vote for Trump, then you're voting for Harris. If you, you know, I've heard all that stuff. Okay, I've been around a long time. Some of you seem to forget that. You give me these statements thinking I've never heard them before. Um, that's not the case, okay? Uh, I am not for Kamala Harris because I've said some things against Donald Trump. Um, get it figured out. Left and right wing are part of the same bird. All right, um, professional wrestling. Uh, Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. You know, the first WrestleMania. Oh, they're, they're bitter enemies. They're going to kill each other and tear each other's heads off. No, they're just uh, two actors working for the same uh, organization. All right, Trump and Harris are both uh, working for the same globalist organization. Um, they might have two different little ways of appealing to their people that follow them so that they can either use the left to bring in a Bolshevik communist type revolution or use the right to bring in a fascist type of uh, dictatorship or whatever else. But it's still, it's just two branches of the same system. All right, please understand that. Um, but see, this the philosophy is all wrong. Well, we have to vote for the lesser of two evils. Um, no, actually you don't. It'd be kind of like saying um, somebody comes up to you and they say, you know, what would you rather have, crack cocaine or heroin? Hmm, let me think here. Maybe I, I should consider which of the two. No, you say uh, neither one. Sorry, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to have either one. Um... That's the way it should be. Not, huh, you know, this is true. I should, I should really think about this. And, you know, boy, I don't know how to make a decision. <laughs> They're both wrong. Okay, what's a Christian supposed to do? A Christian, um, you know, with this current level of selection, I mean, you go way back many years ago, there might have been some difference there and whatever else and voting and whatever. I, the one time I voted, uh, it was for George W. Bush when he was going against Al Gore years ago. And I was all, da -da -da, you know, vote and all this other stuff. And then I realized my vote really didn't mean anything. And again, you see that with the last election um, that we had here in America, Biden versus Trump. Trump won. I don't doubt that for one second. He won, but they wanted to put Biden in. I was actually so much thinking that Trump was going to win the last time that if you see my 100% more sure word of prophecy, I said, I believe, I'm not prophesying, but I believe my prediction is that they'll put Trump in. That was my prediction. I was wrong. Um, it turned out that they wanted to anger the right a little bit more before they do the fascist right wing takeover kind of a thing, which they certainly have angered the right wingers uh, quite a bit. And I am a right winger myself. I stand for a lot of the right wing causes. So, you know, understand what I'm saying here but what's the secret what's the system that I'm talking about what do we do as Christians all right um there's supposed to be power there as Christians we're not supposed to just give in to the world and whatever else um we should have spiritual power all right let me show you a verse or two of scripture here get my little miniature bible out some nice flowers out here right now. Some, the yellow that you see behind me there that's goldenrod. And of course the pinkish purple flowers are fireweed. Fireweed makes a very good tea, very medicinal tea. The Russians call it even chai. And it's really good if you ferment it correctly. Uh, Romans chapter 3 and verse 8 says... And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. In other words, there are people that are out there saying of the apostles that they are teaching that you should do evil so that good may come. And Paul is saying that's such a ridiculous thing that their damnation, people like that are damned to hell. You're not a saved person if you would say that it's good to do evil uh, let's do evil that good may come. Um, that's not the, the mark of a saved person that makes that statement. All right. Um, 
have to watch out for that. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that think, okay, yeah, Trump, yeah, he did some bad things and whatever. I see this in the comments, you know. But, but, uh, here's the thing. You say, Brother Brian, okay, just give me your honest opinion. What do you think? Who do you think is going to win? Trump. I do. I don't think that they're going to put in uh, Kamala uh, Horseface Harris. I don't believe that they're going to put her in. Why? Well, because uh, the globalist goonies, they can only push patriotic people so far before it becomes dangerous because patriotic people start to then think of ways to make revolution happen and whatever else, and they start to think, okay, we're being pushed too far here. We're going to have to overthrow this satanic regime and whatever. See, they can't let it get that far. So I think uh, people on the right have had enough of the people on the left. And so I think it'd be a lot better to bring in tyranny through Donald Trump, like what happened the last time around. Uh, all the two administrations of Obama and his husband, I mean, uh, his uh, wife, <laughs> Big Mike, they call him. And, um, but you know, two administrations of that, people are ready for a Republican. And Trump is a, he's a good speech reader and a good, he can go ad lib and everything else. He's a good actor. And you know, I mean, the guy's got a, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. That should concern you. But you know, no, I don't. Uh... So you say, you think Trump's coming to come in? Yeah, I do. Um, unless he keeps pulling off these sloppy uh, little staged events and whatever else. Um, but let me give you a couple verses of scripture here. Second Timothy chapter three, um, verses one through five. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Um, in other words, uh, daily news, in other words, is what that kind of translates to. Um, <clears throat> but verse 5 here. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Um, here's the problem. American Christians have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Uh, being corrupt and abominable and unto every good work disobedient. Um... People here in this country, if the Christian church was stronger, the politicians would be very much afraid of doing anything that would upset the Christians. And it wouldn't matter who they put in. You could have a Democrat. I mean, I've known conservative Democrats. Show me one of those anymore. I mean, I guess that they still exist, but uh, my grandparents on my mother's side were conservative Democrats. Uh, professing Christian Democrats, lifelong. Um, and see, back in the years when churches had power, back in the early 1900s, the politicians were careful. They were careful with what they did. They couldn't push the tyranny too far. Then uh, the uh, whole thing with uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, when he passed the whole 501c3 thing, the Johnson Amendment, I think they called it, or something where the churches were no longer allowed to do things that would influence public policy. They couldn't tell people who to vote for. And ironically, Trump overthrew that part of it. You can still have your 501c3 tax exemption, but now you can tell people who to vote for. And I heard recently, uh, Trump himself said at one of the speeches that he was giving, he said, oh, you know, Reverend Paula White, why would you call a woman pastor a reverend? Uh, I don't think so, especially that witch. But, you know, the Reverend and Paula White, you know, she's going to have it that you can vote in your church. You Christians need to get out. You need to vote. It's important that you need to vote. So now we have the churches used to influence the elections by making the politicians afraid. The politicians overthrew that ability with their 501c3 tax exemption. And then they came out under Trump the first time and they said, we'll get rid of that. So the churches used to make politicians afraid. Now the politicians use the churches to get votes. 
Churches are uh, government institutions, by the way, if you didn't know that. Um, but that's where we're at. So, uh, my answer is, the problem is not with politicians. You know, political elections are rigged. I mean, they can come in with all the different methods and everything else, electronic voting and mail-in ballots and all that. I mean, come on, people. Oh, your vote's so important. Yeah, no, it isn't. Not at the national level. No, it isn't. And, um, but see, what's really behind this whole thing? I'll tell you what's really behind it. A bunch of Christians that want to see America become great again. That's what you really want, isn't it? You want to avoid that nasty thing called judgment. National ju judgment. You know, things might fall apart here in this nation. There might be blood running in the streets, and, and it might be some of your blood that runs in the streets. And you kind of want to avoid that. Oh, I don't know about that. I'll just uh, go with this guy that's promising us that uh, he's going to make America great again and bring it back to the way it was during his first regime in. That'd be a problem because it wasn't very good, which I've documented. But um, let us do evil. Let us vote for somebody who's evil that good may come. That's what the real problem is here. That's why I have a major issue with this whole thing. But you see, the Bible also teaches that if judgment comes to a nation, it begins at the house of God. The people who call themselves Christians are the ones that God will judge first. Notice it said there in the passage, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. How many Christians are really a threat to the secular globalists out there? The deep state, whatever that is. Not very many, not very many. Uh, examine yourself out there. Examine yourself, make sure that you're in the faith, make sure that you're saved. I can't do that for you. Uh, it's a personal relationship between you and God. I'm not a holy priest that can you know, come into my confessional box and confess your sins to me and I can say, thy sins are forgiven thee, son or daughter, you know. Uh, no, I can't do that. You can't get a sinner to uh, forgive your sins. Uh, only a sinless man can forgive your sins. And that sinless man is the Lord Jesus Christ. I suggest you get things worked out between you and him. Because uh, uh, cursed is the man that trusteth in man. That maketh flesh his arm. Um, watch out for all the po political stuff and whatever and the promises that these guys make. I mean, tell me one politician that has ever followed through on all of the promises that he's made. Not happening. Uh, your faith needs to be in Jesus Christ and you need to get your own life cleaned up. I need to examine myself and say, where am I wrong? Lord, what am I doing that's displease displeasing in thy sight? I want to have power, Lord. I don't want to be a, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And by the way, the passage said, from such withdraw thyself, or from such turn away. Okay, you get away from people that have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. All uh, these church buildings are so powerless right now, especially after 2020, doing all the things that they were told to do. I'd run away from those places. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching.